In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we come to the altar of God here at church, to the altar of our hearts at home, we acknowledge our sins, we turn back to the Lord now, and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are resplendent with unfading glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you died and rose again, and so you give us hope. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the Eucharist as a sign of your covenant with us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care, because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirsts like the earth parched, lifeless, and without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory, for your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. 
As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied, and with exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. I will remember you upon my couch, and through the night watches I will meditate on you. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with the word of command, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, we will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Stay awake and be ready, for you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Imagine for a moment uh, a wedding here in church. Uh, lots of people in the pews, cameras and iPhones at the ready. Uh, the groom has, has come down the aisle. Uh, wearing a, a sharp-looking suit, and he's, and he's standing, standing up here off to the side just a little bit. He stands there, and he waits. And then the attendants start coming down the aisle slowly, gracefully, as pairs, and the groom continues to stand here and wait. And then the junior attendants come, the, the, the flower girl and the, and, the, and the ring bearer, and the groom continues to stand here and wait. And then finally, the music changes to announce the arrival of the bride, and everybody stands up uh, to see her and to recognize her, her presence. And there she is, standing in the doorway uh, with her father. She's radiant with happiness. Her dress uh, magnifies her joy. All eyes in the church, especially the eyes of the groom, follow the bride as she you know, floats down the aisle. Hardly anybody's even looking at the groom anymore. Uh, not until he and the bride join hands and step up into the sanctuary. The bride has arrived. The wedding can begin. Now, when we hear the gospel today, we have to picture just the opposite. 
We have to picture just the opposite. In that wedding, the ancient Jewish wedding, the bride is the one who is waiting and her ten bridesmaids with her. She stays and she waits and stays alert for the arrival of the groom. She is dressed like a queen, he is dressed like a king. And his arrival is announced with the blare of trumpets and with the shouts of his groomsmen, especially that of the, especially the best man, when he says something like, Behold, the, bride, the bridegroom, come, to, come out to meet him. In this wedding, Jesus talks about the arrival of the groom is what makes everybody stand up and take notice. Jesus is nonetheless trying to tell us something through this image of the, of the Jewish wedding feast. And the message is that each of us is part of, each of us is part of a marriage between God and humanity, between heaven and earth. And our part in this is to be the bride and the bridesmaids, those virgins. And what do the bride and her bridesmaids do? Well, they wait. We wait. And we prepare. And then we wait some more for the arrival of our divine spouse, Jesus, who will come to us in all splendor, dressed like a king. That's the message in this uh, image of the ancient Jewish wedding. Stay awake, be prepared, for you know neither the day nor the hour. And that, in a nutshell, is what our daily life of faith is about. You know, watching, waiting, preparing for Jesus to come to take us to himself. It's basically another version of the first and greatest commandment, isn't it? To love God with all our heart, all our mind, all our strength, all our being. Love God, wait for the Lord. The second half of the commandment is important too, of course, to love our neighbors as ourselves. But we can't get those two things out of order. We can't get so busy, you know, doing good things in the name of Jesus that we forget about Jesus himself. And it can be hard to not let that happen. And the reason why it's hard to not let that happen is because of the wait. The wait. If we imagine again, if we imagine again the bride and the groom here in church on their wedding day, you know, they don't have to wait that long to see each other again. Uh, they probably saw each other just the day before. But in ancient Jewish customs, they could wait a pretty long time. The bride and the groom with their parents would come together for the betrothal, uh, when they would be legally married, when the groom would, would pay the dowry for his bride, uh, and they would enter into a covenant. And then they would separate. They would separate. They wouldn't see each other again until that night when the groom would come back with his groomsmen and the blare of the trumpets. But the time in between those two events could be months, even a year or longer. So it was no small task for the bride and her attendants to prepare and to remain watchful for the groom's return. It was a tremendous work of devotion for them to remain vigilant and watchful, especially when you consider that they had no idea when the groom was going to come back. And neither did the groom for that matter. Only the groom's father knew. He's the one who would say when everything was, was ready for the, for the wedding feast to begin. Our daily life as companions of Jesus involves a lot of watching, waiting, and preparing for him to come back. And we generally have a long wait. In, in one respect, you know, we're talking about uh, the second coming of Christ, the general resurrection, uh, which Christians have been waiting around for, you know, for about 2,000 years. But we're also, also talking about our individual deaths, when the Lord will take us uh, into his and to our heavenly home. So we're, we're talking about those two things. You know, we, generally, we humans generally become our, uh, more keenly aware of our mortality in maybe our 40s. You know, when, when uh, people we thought were kind of just rock-solid presences in our lives, like grandparents, parents, begin to pass away, and we realize that, oh, someday I'm going to pass from this life too. And then, who knows, it could be another 30, 40, 50 years before that happens. What do we do during those long, long years? Well, we wait and we prepare with anticipation, with faith, with the desire to see our longings fulfilled. And importantly, we wait with a sure and certain hope that the bridegroom of our, the bridegroom of our souls will indeed 
come and take us to himself. We wait with that sure and certain hope. Even in spite of the bride's long wait for her groom to return, she waited with confident hope. And she could be confident because of the price he had paid for her. That was the guarantee. Now, in terms of our own betrothal to Jesus, well, what price did he pay? And when and how did he pay it? Well, the price he paid for us, his beloved, was his own life. He gave his own life. And he paid it on the cross on Good Friday. It's why that Friday is so good. It was the day when Jesus paid the dowry for us and promised himself to us as a devout spouse. And amazingly, he did it willingly. The dowry he paid wasn't a loaf of bread or a bottle of wine. It was his own flesh and blood. Hence, the gravity of our belief in Christ's real and living presence in the Eucharist. The sign of his spousal commitment to us is right here. The dowry he paid is right here in the Eucharist. Which, by the way, he doesn't keep for himself. He gives that dowry back to us, to his beloved. When we're in church, why do we treat this place with such respect and awe? Well, because right there in the tabernacle, right here on the altar, is the dowry. The price Jesus paid for his bride. The guarantee that he will come back to us. The reason for our hopefulness, even in the face of death. And so right now, we're kind of in this in-between time. Jesus has betrothed himself to us. He has paid the dowry for his bride. And at the ascension, he went away again back to his father's house. Now we wait. We watch and we prepare for his return. But exactly how do we stay awake and how do we prepare? Well, firstly, we do that by celebrating the Eucharist with true faith and devotion. Celebrating the dowry Jesus left us as a sign of his love. With thankfulness, with awe and reverence for what the Eucharist actually is. And secondly, we stay awake and prepare for his return by nurturing good habits. We get into a habit of prayer, and we pray uh, whether it's convenient or inconvenient. We get into the habit of following Jesus' commandments, his commandments to love God, to prefer what is of God, uh, to love what is good and true, to devote ourselves, what is beautiful and loving, and so on. We get into the habit of entrusting our decisions to God, asking God to to take our decisions and and please make something good happen from our decisions. We get into the habit every night before we fall asleep of sharing with Jesus our desire to someday fall asleep into his divine embrace, along with all the saints and the angels and our loved ones who we long to see again. We get into the habit of sharing what's on our mind and in our hearts with Jesus. We make sure that he knows us. Even as we live our everyday lives, going to work, paying the bills, raising the kids, playing sports, everything else we do. Even as we live our everyday lives, we still do things to help us prepare and to stay awake. Just just like the ancient Jewish brides and, and bridesmaids, it's a tremendous task to be vigilant. But it's also a tremendous act of devotion to the one who has promised himself to us forever. And so today we pray that God help us to be faithful to our good habits, to the Eucharist, to all the sacraments, so that we can stay awake and prepare ourselves one day at a time for the return of Jesus and our entry into the heavenly wedding supper of the Lamb. Once again, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For the Catholic Church, her leaders, and all the faithful, that others would see Jesus in us through the love and mercy we have for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders and leaders and nations of the world, that the Holy Spirit would soften their hearts and open their minds to receive the word of God and be transformed. Let us pray to the Lord. For those on the margins of society, those who struggle alone, the poor and those in need, and those who deal with mental illness and other infirmities, let us pray to the Lord. For vocations to faithful married life, consecrated religious life, the diaconate and the priesthood from our parish and all parishes in our diocese, let us pray to the Lord. For our veterans, that God would bless them with courage, hope, and strength, and an awareness of our gratitude for their service to our country, let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers written in our parish books of prayer, and for the prayers we offer to the Lord from the altar of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of St. Clair Parish, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all those who have fallen asleep in Christ, may they rest in his peace and be taken up into the heavenly wedding feast. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our God, we ask you in your kindness to hear our prayers and in your wisdom and providence to answer them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.